Having a dialed in printer and tuned profiles means that more often than not, you'll end up with really consistent prints. However, since each material and model you print has slightly different requirements, it's a good idea to familiarize yourself with the other slicer settings, even if you don't need to use them regularly. At one point, I knew my slicer in and out, but with how advanced they've become and how many different settings you can adjust, there are plenty that I'm unfamiliar with. One of my goals this year is to play around with some of these settings to learn how they work and find different situations where they can be utilized. We're gonna kick this off with Thick Bridges, which is one that I don't have enabled by default, but they've been really helpful in some of the functional prints I've done. So in this video, we'll go over what they are, how they work, and I'll show you a few examples where they've made a difference. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Before diving in, I wanted to mention that while my slicer of choice is Orca Slicer, much of what's covered will be relevant to the other slicers as well. Most of the current slicers are based on Slick 3R, and many of the features end up getting ported over even if it's not right away. I imagine anyone who's been printing for even a short time is familiar with the term bridging. But for anyone new to 3D printing, bridges are simply extrusions that happen in the air and are not supported by a previous layer. A lot of the times this can be avoided by designing for printing, orienting your part differently, or just using supports. But there's times where bridging simply can't be avoided. The good news is that 3D printers are surprisingly good at bridging, especially with adequate cooling. The thick bridges setting is found underneath the quality tab within the section on bridging. If we highlight over it, the tooltip says that when enabled, bridges are more reliable and can bridge longer distances, but look worse. If disabled, bridges look better, but are reliable for only shorter distances. Underneath it is another option for thick internal bridges, which does the same thing, but for internal bridges. Looking at a few different profiles, this setting seems to be enabled most of the time by default. When thick bridges aren't enabled, the bridge line width is calculated using the layer height set along with the line width for the feature type. When enabled, the extrusion width of the bridge line is set to be equal to the diameter of your nozzle. Using this model as an example, I'm printing with a fairly standard 0.2 millimeter layer height and my line width other than the first layer, infill and inner walls is set to 0.42. If I slice the file with thick bridges off, and move the layer slider to the bridge with layer height set for the color scheme, we can see that the layer height of my bridge is 0.2. If I enable thick bridges and reslice the model, the bridge lines are using a much thicker 0.4 layer height. On top of this, if we count the lines that are used in the bridge, we have 20 lines with thick bridges enabled and 23 lines with it off. Most of the time, these profiles with thick bridges disabled works fine. But I've had two somewhat recent examples of parts that turning on thick bridges made a pretty big difference. The first is the pulley body for the Prusa MMU3 that I printed out of ABS. I had zero issues with printing these parts, but for some reason when I printed this one, the bridges on the second layer looked awful. I played around with a few things like cooling and bridge flow ratio, but turning on thick bridges made a massive difference in these bridges being successful. Then just a couple of weeks ago, when I was printing a few parts for the box turtle on my Chidi Plus 4, I noticed some sag on the top bridges. In this case, an X-Acto or flush cutters could have cleaned it up, but I decided to try out thick bridges again, and the result was no filament sagging from the first bridge layer. Based on the tooltip, the reason for not running thick bridges is that they look worse. But in these cases, the bridges actually look much better. One thing I was curious about was how thick bridges would handle bridging at longer distances. So I ran a bridging test starting at 10 millimeters, going all the way up to 100 millimeters with thick bridges on and thick bridges off. When I compared them, I'd say that thicker bridges performed worse, especially on the longer distances. My guess is that because the line width and height is larger, that added weight is what caused the additional sagging. This is a pretty extreme scenario, and I don't know that I've ever had to bridge 100 millimeters, but it at least shows that there are times that the thicker lines can work against you. For a lot of what I do, I plan on just having them enabled by default, since I don't feel like a slightly larger line really looks worse, and for the types of parts I print, I would rather a successful bridge than filament sagging. 
In both of my examples with the Prusa MMU3 part and the box turtle pieces, they were printed in either ABS or ASA, which makes a lot more sense because oftentimes the fan is running lower for these materials, at least with a lot of the default profiles. You'll have to decide whether running them on or off as a default is the better option, but I highly recommend giving them a try if you're having a troublesome bridge to see if it solves your issue. And that has been Thick Bridges. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you now have a much better understanding of what Thick Bridges are, along with some scenarios where maybe it does or does not make sense to use them. Let me know in the comments if you give them a try and what your results are like, and if there is another slicer feature or function that you'd like covered in a future video, I'd love to hear those as well. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video just about every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel further, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.